and welcome to Gefet in the Daf. I'm Yael Shimoni, bringing to you together with Hadran and Yeshiva Drisha, learning Iyun in your queue of Daf Yomi. And in fact, when we started Masech and I was really expecting this Daf, Daf Min Bet. It's a Daf that is very, very short Gemara. It's actually part of a Mishnah and a very long run accompanying it. And maybe you'll have the koach also not only to read the Mishnah, but to read the Ram at the same time that you would usually learn the stuff. So you have extra time. And this run is very, very intriguing because it gives you a different look at the whole world of Iso Veter. If I would ask you why when a drop of milk falls into a big can of meat, and there's more than 60 in the meat where it's batel. Usually we think it's because uh, the, the taste of the meat took over this chala, notenta. But when we're going to get into Isur Veter here, where we're discussing also things that are not different in taste, then maybe we'll get a very different perspective about Isu Veter. These are big chudushim in the run here. And those of you who have learned Isu Veheter probably met this intriguing run, and those of you who haven't, so I hope to get her to, to learn. And I'm warning you, this is a little harder than usual, but I think it's worth it. So let's go ahead, and if you have questions, you can always write to me. But I really, really was expecting this, so we're going to try. Okay, let's start from the Mishnah. The Mishnah talks about a person who... Uh, was no doubt that he won't be eating milk. It's not our business right now. Let's move to the meat issue. Says the Mishnah, Okay, we have a machloket between Rabbanan and Rabbi Yuda. The Ran has a different girsa. For the Ran, it's machloket between Rabbanan and Rabbi Yossi. Anyway, what's the machloket? Rabbanan think that if uh, you said that you won't be eating meat, so then this meat, it's become meat in general became an isur, and therefore anything that it's mixed with will be exactly like basal bechalav. Uh, this this meat is all the world is 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 now dairy uh, for the meat. Okay, that's what Rabbi Yuda thinks. But Chachamim say no. When when you're doing the darim and you're saying I won't be eating meat, so that's only the meat. Anything that's not really meat, even though it's fleshik, will be mutter. Okay, because this is not dairy. I mean, this is isur v'hetar. When you're not there, you're not turning the meat into an isur like basal b'chalav or like basal tarif. It's not the same isur. This is a different isur. Isur not dairy. You said you won't be eating meat, so we we check what your language means by meat. And meat does not mean the soup. It doesn't mean chicken soup. It means only meat. Continues the Mishnah. And describes that Rabbi Yuda, uh had a proof for his point of view that when you're usher meat, it's as if you turned it into a trefa. Says so Rabbi Yuda, once somebody said that he could not eat meat, and Rabbi Tarfan said, oh, also the eggs that were in the chulent, you can't eat. You can't eat the eggs. So Chachamim told him, that's not a proof. You know why? Because Rabbi Tarfon talked about something very specific. Let's read the Mishnah. Chachamim say, we agree with you, Rabbi Yudah, only if we're talking about a specific piece of meat. If somebody came and said, this is Asur, this specific thing, yes, he managed to create this as an Isur, and therefore the taste of this will be also Osir. So if this is a piece of meat, and I would put it in the chulin, so if it gave the taste, and batal bashishim, if there's less than shishim inside the chulin, will be Asur. But if I said meat in general, I didn't manage to create this strong isur, and therefore meat in general will not be osir the eggs. This Mishnah is intriguing, as we said, and this is the explanation of this Mishnah, but the Rishonim were troubled by a different question. And the run starts by quoting a very famous question that the Rishonim had on this Mishnah. The end of the Mishnah said that if I turned a piece of meat into an isur, then also uh, the eggs inside the children will be asur, right? 
says the run, Kashia Leile Ravuta. The big rabbis had a question. Hey, Hamin and Haha, Din Yeshbo Menotenta Masur de Mashma, and Bobinotenta Muta. Says the run, I said that if this is part of my children, and now I see that the children is small, so then all the children is usher. But if this, just a drop of this, just a tiny bit of it, right? Just this amount. So you see? If this fell into the chont, the chont is mutter. Why? Because it's batal bishishim. Says the run, how could that be? Says the run, so those of you who've learned Masechet Beitza, and I know that some of you have, learned already the din of Deval Shashlomatirin. Deval Shashlomatirin means, if I have something that is Asr now, but it will be in the future, Mutar, and it might be just because time passed, or it can be because you have to do something in order to be Matirit, like this example, uh, that... If I said that I cannot eat this, I was no deal, then I can go and ask a chacham, and it's a mitzvah to ask a chacham to be matir. So therefore, it is not really totally asur, it is only asur now, and it's something that can be mutar, it's something that has matir. We learned in Masech Beitza that if something has matir, it will always be asur, and there will be no dinei bitu in it. Let's go over the, the example that we have in Masechet Beitza. Masechet Beitza, the Fgimel Amud Bet, talks about a Beitza that was uh, an egg that was born on Shabbos. An egg that was born on Shabbos is Muktzeh, but it's only, only Muktzeh now. Uh, and after Shabbos is over, it will be Mutar. So says the Mishnah, the brights are there, that this Beitza, during Shabbos, if it got mixed in a whole bag of other... Um, eggs, the whole bag will be asur because there's no beetle. All of the eggs will be asur. The Gemara there asks why, and the last answer is because this egg will be able to be eaten in a few hours a day. It's the Vashe Shlomatirin and the Vashe Shlomatirin afilo be'elef lobati. What is the rationale behind this? So the Rambam, when he's pasking this beta for halacha, gives an explanation. Says the Rambam, "Kesher sheasur leochlak achasur et atema at etatela vaafilu nitarvava beelif kula nasurot shehari." The reason is, "Lemachal etu akol." Shehari lemachal etu akol. It sounds it sounds like an explanation. <laughs> let's let's say the explanation. It's like I'm a. If you have children, you know this. You know, your child asks for something, you say, it's not Asr, it will be Asr, it will be Mutar later. You cannot watch TV now, you can watch TV in two hours. So then if my kid asks me, can I watch a little bit of TV? I say, no, because you can watch in two hours, wait, just wait. So this is the same idea that seems to be written here in the Rama. Because we know this will be Mutar in the future, we won't be doing Hakalot of Bitul because we know that you can be uh, eating this when it's totally fine. So if you can consume this when it's totally fine, we won't be using the dinim of bitul because the dinim of bitul takes something that is not okay and sort of find a way to make it kosher. So here we're saying if it can be really kosher in a while, just wait. So this is sort of an explanation in the Rambam, but as you feel, we're not used to these kinds of explanations in Halacha, and when we're going to read the Ran today, the continuum of the continuation of the Ran, he will give us a different explanation, which will be more philosophical and more maybe mechanical in understanding how the rules of Isur Veheter work. Anyway, let's go back to the Kushia. If we know that something that will be Mutar, uh, that can be mutar if you do something, it will never be mutar. How come the Mishnah says that if I said this piece of meat I cannot eat, if it fell into a very big calendar and I can eat it? Uh, the din is supposed to be different. If it fell into, even if it's a huge pot, even if it's a very, very, very big pot, it will never be battle. It should be like Hametz Vepesach, not like Basar Bechalach. Because it's the Varsha Shlomatin. Okay.
let's continue in the run and see how the run uh, solves this first question. The first question is solved uh, in an interesting manner. You have to add another understanding in a bit there to, to see how this works. Says the run. ואני אומר, וכי אמרינה נפילו באלף לא באתי להלל מין הם בין במינו, אבל הא הכי להתערב באחר שאינו מינו, דומי עוד הביצים שנתבשלו עמו, וכל שאינו מינו אפילו בדבר שיש לו מתירים בנותן טעם. And he gives proof to his explanation. What did the run say here? The run said that the rule that if something can be mutter later, it will never be able to be mevatel, it is true only if it got mixed with something that is like it. Davar bemino. For example, we had an egg in Masada Beitza that mixed up in a thousand eggs. So these are two things that one is Asur and one is Mutar, but they're from the same kind. It's min bemino. It's an egg with eggs. So we have a rule that an egg with eggs, things will not be able to mevatel one another. But if this egg will fall into a whole uh, box of wheat, then it will be able to be mevatel. Okay, because min sheno mino batel, and min bemino eno batel. So this is an okinta to explain how the Mishnah says that uh, you can eat meat that fell into a cauldron if it's less than shishim, and how it won't be contradicting the Gemara and Masechet Beitza. So it seems everything is well, but still there is no reasoning here. Come, let's wait for the reasoning. Reasoning will arise from another kushia. Continues the run and says, many Mishonim asked, how could this be? Or what does the reef think about this? The reef, Rabbi Noah Fasi, one of the earliest Rishonim, said in a different sugi of something that seemed to be contradicting what the Ran just said. The reef talks about cooking and baking in the same oven. If I am cooking meat in the same oven, I'm also putting a challah. And the challah is baking in the oven that the meat is there. Says the reef, you cannot take this bread and eat it with a dairy dish. Why, says the reef? By the way, that's halacha, okay? You cannot eat this, take this piece of bread and, and then eat with it, um, uh, let's say, a porridge with, uh, with milk. You can't do that. Kutach, that's how they call it. You're not allowed to. But what's interesting about the reef is his reasoning. The reef explains this halacha in the following manner. The have the var sheesh lo matirim, the hamate le mechla ve hade bisra, mishum hachi afilu be elef lo batil. Says the reef, this piece of bread didn't get a lot of meat in it, it only got a smell of meat. But still, because this piece of bread can be eaten on its own, or can be eaten with the meat, it's not really asur, it's only asur with milk. Therefore, even if there's a bit of taste of meat in it, or a smell of meat in it, we have the rule that the Val Shesh Lomatir, it's something that is mutar in the future, or can be mutar now if you choose to eat it with meat. So even if you have a thousand pieces of other things, a thousand pieces of, of dairy products, so the reef here is taking dairy and this bread, and bread and dairy are obviously different types of foods, different types of material. This is bread and this is milk. So according to what the Ron said up till now, he said that if I have bread and milk, so the same law of the Val Shishlo Matirin won't, won't be relevant. We'll be using the usual rules of Bitu. And here the reef says, no, even if it's Min Beshenomido, it will never be Batil because the Val Shishlo Matirin lo batel afilu be'elif. Could it be that the reef disagrees with the rule that the Ran just came up with? So first, the Ran says that some Mishonim thought that there is a machloket here, and it's also machloket. So we, all, we won't get into that. It's a long uh, passage in the Ran. 
the reason we won't get into it because the runner himself thinks that he can solve the problem and he can explain to us why, even though the reef said something that seems to be contradictory, as a matter of fact, the reef definitely agrees with what the Ron said up till now. Says the Ron, Limirim livrea rav alfa sizan. Hach itnan hacha de davar sheish lo miatil in besheno milo batil. Hane milei kol sheasur achshav velatid liot mitar achar zman kenedarim. Mishum dekami baeli kevan de lerabanan bekula yisurei min bemino batil kmo besheno mino. Marau chachamim lechalik bedavar sheish lo matil in ben mino lesheno mino umeezeta. Says the run, in order to understand the reef, first we need to understand the basic halacha. Why did Chachamim think that if I have things that are from the same type, an egg and eggs, then there won't be bitul? But if I have an egg and meat, we, there will be bitul. First, says the run, let's understand this, then let's solve our other problems. So, of course, we're full of, of interest. What is behind this halacha? Why there is bitul if things are different, and there is no bitul if things are of the same type. So, explains the run. I'll explain to you the tam, yeah, the, the, the basic idea of, of dine bitul. Says the run, the question whether or not something from the same type will be mevatel or not, that's a machloket. It's a machloket menachot. And there the machloket is, says that the machloket is about how to read a pasuk. Okay, what pasuk in the Torah teaches us the idea of, of a bitul? And Yom Kippur, we know that there are two korbanot that the Kohen Gadol brings and then takes their blood inside Kodesh HaKodeshim. One is par, the par chatat of Am Yisrael, and the second is the se'il, the se'il chatat. And, halacha, and, and, and what you do in Avodat Yom Kippurim is that you take from dam se'il and dam par and you mix them together. Now, dam par is a lot more, like it's a bigger animal than the se'il, so you have a lot of blood and a bit of blood, and still the Torah says that you have your mixture that includes two types of blood, par the se'il. So, this is a very interesting puzzle because we have blood and blood. These are two bloods. And even though they're mixed together, each one of them is viewed as separate. We have a whole bottle of blood here, but the way the Torah describes it as two different bloods, even though they're mixed together, you can't tell them apart. So the question is, what did the Torah teach us? Rabbi Yehuda thinks, says the run, you know why when you mix these two bloods together, even though you cannot tell them apart, as far as halacha is concerned, there's still two different things here. Because that's what Yehuda uh, contrary to what you think, when you mix up with things that are like you, the likeness does not put you down, it enhances you. If you want to be mevatel somebody, you have to fight against it. Okay, how does Vito work? We have Basa, we have Hav, they fight against each other, and then one takes over the other, whoever is bigger or stronger. But if you have two things that are alike, they're in peace together. When there is peace, there is no mix-up, you know. Sometimes people say this, that, that, that when uh, you have war between countries, then the people, the foe and the friend become more alike. But if you have two friends, each one of them keeps their own separate self. So Rabbi Yudha says this about Esau Vahed. It's, it's the same idea. Rabbanan says the Ran. They agree with Rabbi Yudha, but... They are holic in how do you know if somebody is like someone else? Rabbi Yuda said, this is blood and this is blood. So physically, they're the same kind. So that's why they won't, they won't contradict each other. They enhance each other. Hachamim say, no, 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 no. The reason that they're not contradictory has nothing to do with their material. 
It's because of their halachic status. Both the par and the seir, both of them can be brought on top of them as back. So halachically, they're similar. If you have similarity halachically, then there's no bitul. But if there would be a difference in halacha between them, if you would have blood that is asr and blood that is mutar, then the mutar blood will take over the asr blood or whoever would be more, because you don't look at the material, you look at things in halachic eyes. And sums up the run. The kihechi, the Rabbi Yuda Azi, the Chardimion Haetzem, as the Rabbanan Chardimion Haetel. So, what did we learn up till now from the run? Two very interesting things. A, we have uh, an idea here in Chazal that if you have a similarity, then there will not be a, a reduction of each side. Each side will still be there, even though one is is smaller than the other, because when you have two things that are on the same level, they don't take over each other. They let each other live next to each other in peace, and maybe they even enhance each other. So that's the first uh, rule that we've learned from the run, the first idea, very interesting idea in the run. And the second idea is that the machloket between Rabbi Yudah and Chachamim is a machloket about whether or not we look at the world in halachic eyes, which is what Chachamim say, and they say, oh, how do I know if something is similar? If two things are mutar, they're the same. Even though they're different materials, they're the same. And if two things are iser, they're the same because they're, they're, it doesn't matter the material. And Rabbi Yudah says, no, I look at materials. I don't look at halachic status. And therefore, if I have the same material, but one blood is a sur and one blood is mutar, then there won't be a bitul, and the iser won't be mevatel in the heter. So these are two things that said the run. Let's see how this helps us continue. The run says, Lefichach. Kol shechalukim b'isur v'etir afilu min b'minu batil v'hav alei kemim b'shenu minu. Says the run. Chachamim said, don't look at material, look at halachic status. And therefore, anything that has a different halachic status, one is asa, one is mutar, even though it's the same kind, it's min b'shen amina. Umishum hachi amrinan, the bedavar sheesh lo matirim natu rabanan mishum chumra le rabi yudat, the kevan sheen davar zeh chaluk mina eter legamre beisur veeter, share afru tzofo liot nitar kamo, amrinan sheno batel bimino, so the run here says something very interesting. According to what I said up till now, um, for Chachamim, if I have Isu Veheter, um, so I had this one egg that was Aser, it, uh, it was made in Yom Tov. And I have uh, 10 or 1,000 eggs that are kosher. And Chachamin said, don't look at the eggs, yeah. <laughs> look at their halachic status. So this egg is asr, and these eggs are mutter. So according to Chachamin, they should have been a bitu. Says the run, no. Because this egg will be mutter in the future, tomorrow, this is not really asr. When I look at its halachic status, I see two things that are actually similar, because this is only not mutar now. This is mutar now, but not mutar now and will be in the future. It's very, very close to mutar now. And because they're so close, then there's not enough uh, friction to create a bitu. Okay? In order to have a bitu, you have to have real difference. And here, there's not enough difference. Continues to run and says, okay, so I have this egg, and this egg is almost mutar, and I have these eggs, and they're now mutar, so there's not enough friction, so this egg still, is still here, and that's why the Valshesh lo matirin lo bati. It's not because we want to wait, it's because there's not enough friction. But continues to run and says, okay, it is true there's not enough friction, but there's still a difference. So if there's a difference on the halachic level, then, and only then, Chachamim are willing to look at the material. And then Chachamim look at this piece of meat, which I was saying that I'm not supposed to eat, and I can change its status. I'll go to Chacham. And here are eggs. So as far as the world of Isur Veheter goes, there is not a big enough difference to create a bitu. 
But then I move to the world and I see, okay, maybe halakhically there's not a big enough difference. But physically, these are wildly different. This is a piece of meat. These are eggs. So if I have a big difference in reality, it matters if I have a small difference halakhically. Since there is a small difference halakhically, these two differences, the small difference and the big difference will add up. And then we'll have a bitu because there'll be enough friction. How did the friction work? Big difference in material and small halakhic difference. So big material difference does count if I have a small halakhic difference. And that's how we reach the conclusion that something that has material matters if it's of a different kind of material. Only then the materialism matters. If there is no difference halakhically, I don't care about materials. Continues the run and says, now we can understand the reef. Because the reef talked about a, a situation that we have a piece of bread, which is not really usher because now I can eat it. And having something that I can eat now is really something that is mutar. Maybe it's not mutar everywhere all the time, but now there is a way to make it mutar. So we have this rule that if something is mutar in mutar, there will never be a bitu. There's not enough friction. And even though they're very different physically, this is bread and this is milk, we don't care because if there's no big enough difference in the halakhic level, we are totally blind to the physical aspect of things. So that is the chidush of the run. And I want to sum up the points that we saw up till here. Okay, so what did we learn? First, we learned that the reason that we have bitun is not because of the loss of taste. Taste is not, it's not the main issue. The issue is whether or not there is a basic halachic difference. Because we're prosking according to Chachamim, that's how the reef, that's, that's how the run understands it. And Chachamim say, first you look at the halachic point of view. And if halachically you see things that are very, very different, then there's enough friction for them to be mevat to one another. But if halachically they're on the same level, there's not enough friction. Not only there's not enough friction, maybe these, there's even something that makes the differences stand and remain. And that's why the Vashish lo matirim lo batel. But if there's a small halachic difference, that's the Vashay Shlomatim, because this is mutar now, and this is not mutar yet. So it's a small difference. It's not enough to create friction. Then I will go down and see what's the material situation. If I will find difference in material, I will say there's bitu. If there's no difference in material, that's why there won't be bitu. Okay, so we went through at least most of this run, and as I said, it's very fascinating because it tells you that uh, that the reason there's bitul in in uh, is because they have to have enough friction, you have to have enough difference, and it also says that if you are close and you're similar, there's not enough friction to be mevatel you, and still. There are two different ways to look at the world. One is to look at it in halachic eyes. And that's the most meaningful way as far as Chachamim are, 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 are interested in. But if there is a slight difference in halacha, then and only then are you interested in the physical world and differences in the physicality of things will also become relevant halachically and create enough friction in order to have bitu between things. And that is why when you're noder on a piece of meat and you are adding it to eggs, there will be bitu because these are two different things physically and we do care about that because there is a slight halachic difference because this is not mutar now, that is true, but it will be mutar in the future. That's not enough on its own to be matir this. That's why you have to find out whether or not there's a physical difference and that's why the Mishnah that talks about a physical difference in the Vashash Lomatiri says there is Bitu. But the Braita and the Gemara in Beitza that talks about eggs says, okay, there is a slight halach difference, but there is no difference in the physical world, and therefore we don't have enough friction to create Bitu. Okay, 
dear audience, this has been, I think, a different kind of gaffet. But as I said, I was expecting this uh, because it's a phaseless run in the darn, which is really very interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And I don't know if we'll have another one like this, maybe in the next Masechta. So take care, and I hope to meet you next week, Bli of course.